Good morning, and I'm so glad to have you join me this morning. And basically today we're going to talk about SDTM and CDASH and what the connection is between the two of those initiatives. Our learning objectives today are to review the SDTM concepts and terms and look at model fundamentals. And we'll take a look at the trial design model and identify relationships among data sets and records and look at the fundamental application to associated persons and describe the connection between CDASH and CDISC for data capture. There's a lot of acronyms in today's presentation, so we'll define CDISC by their Clinical Data Interchange Standards Consortium. Say that real quick, and I'm sure you'll have a problem. But the mission statement was for CDISC to develop and support global platform independent data standards that enable information system interoperability to improve medical research and related areas of healthcare. And what that means is that we're going to have standard data variables that we can exchange so that if you are a sponsor and you're outsourcing to a vendor, you have plans of submitting your data for a regulatory submission that requires a CDIS standards, then you want to make sure that your vendor also is able to create CDISC data sets for you so that you have then that exchange of data in a standard format. Let's go into the history in case you're interested. It was formed in 1997 strictly with volunteers and it went to being a nonprofit status in the year 2000. The standards are developed through a consensus-based approach with public reviews. So this hasn't been identified or decided with just a, you know a couple of users this really has about 300 companies or more now that are feeding into the CDIS consortium there's members of the FDA and pharma CROs and like I said about 300 companies so the core principles of the CDISC is to lead the development of standards that improve process efficiency while supporting the scientific nature of clinical research. And again, we as a data management and as a, let's say, research, clinical research, we're moving towards really identifying standards and using standards. CDISC recognizes the ultimate goal of creating regulatory submissions that allow for flexibility. The FDA had said that all submissions for NDAs had to be in CDIS format. I believe it was supposed to have started last year, and they keep extending it further out because everyone isn't ready for it yet. They also acknowledge that the data content structure and quality of the standard data models are of paramount importance independent of the implementation strategy and platform. So it makes no difference what database you're using. CDISC is independent of that because basically the CDISC data sets are in a SAS format. So want to maintain a global multidisciplinary cross-functional composition for CDISC and his working groups. As I mentioned, it's not a one-sided affair. They work with other professional groups to encourage that there is a maximum sharing of information. And I know that they are working with the group that is creating standards for HL7. They do provide significant educational programs to explain these models. And some of the information that is included in here is some of the things that I was exposed to with some CDIS training. And to accomplish the CDIS goals and mission without promoting any individual vendor or organization. Now, you can belong to CDISC, and you can, you know, if you belong to CDISC, then you can have the logo to, to display on your web page, but they will not promote one vendor over another. There are CDISC data models that you may have heard these acronyms as well, ODM, which is the Operational Data Modeling. And there are new features in that which will support the regulatory data submission and eCRF application support. The SDS is the Submissions Data Standards, and they include recommended solutions for signs and symptoms, findings about events or interventions, questions with multiple answers, and questions such as other specify. There is a version, CDIS version 3.1.2, which contains new domains for those for PK and microbiology, and more examples of the previously published domains. Basically, I'm going to put in here the website for CDISC. And for CDISC website, you will also get the information for CDASH. 